Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting this wildflower field in a loose style. And firstly, I'm just going to mask on the sides of my paper using washi tape. You can also use masking tape. Since I'm quite used to painting flowers, I'm going to freehand the flowers in the foreground. So the only sketch that I'm going to add is the horizon line as well as the house in the background and the trees in the background. However, if you're not used to painting flowers freehand, you can also draw the flowers in the foreground. That's all I'm going to draw for the sketch. So here are the colors that I'm going to be using. This is Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke. Burnt Umber by Holbein, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Cerulean Blue by Holbein, Chinese White by Holbein, Terra Verde by Holbein, and lastly this is Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Let's begin to paint. I'm going to start by creating a deep yellow color from a mix of Hansa Yellow and a little bit of Crimson Lake that I'm just going to put on the side for easy access. And I'm just going to paint simple daisies with really long oval shapes for the petals and I'm going to leave the center white. After this, I'm going to use a thick consistency of Burnt Umber mixed with the Crimson Lake and I'm going to dot in the center of the flowers while the surface of the petals are still ever so slightly damp. Then for an even darker brown at the center, I used a mix of Paints Grey and Burnt Umber. Here I'm creating a purple tone from Crimson Lake and Cerulean Blue and I'm just going to paint on very small lines that is fanning outwards I'm going to paint a few flowers close together as well as others which are a little bit further apart so the placement looks a bit more natural. For some of the last few flowers as I'm running out of paint for my bristles, the colors are quite light so I'm going to take this opportunity to create the same mixture but in a thicker consistency and I'm going to add a few more details at the center and just letting the paint spread out naturally. Next, I'm going to add some pink flowers. I'm going to paint the same petals as I did with the yellow flowers, but just at the bottom, fanning outwards. And at the bottom, I'm going to create fluffy textures by just adding lines and putting a medium pressure on my brush. Now going back in with the dark brown again for the center of the pink flowers. And for the fluffy ones, I'm going to add a thicker consistency of the same mix, which is from Crimson Lake and Chinese White. For a slightly different tone of pink, I added a little bit of Hansi Yellow Medium to the previous pink mixture. And here I'm just painting in a medium to light consistency. I'm thinking of thicker petals this time, so the texture might look slightly different. Then while the surface is still a little bit damp, I went in with the same color but with less Chinese white and a slightly thicker consistency for some added variation of color. After this, I'm going to take more of the deep yellow mixture from earlier and I'm going to paint similar flowers in between the ones that I've already painted and I'm just going to place them randomly and add the same mixture with a bit more Crimson Lake to make a more orangey tone while the surface of the yellow flowers are still a bit damp. I'm also going to do the same thing with the same purple mix from Cerulean Blue and Crimson Lake. And again, I'm just going to distribute the purple flowers randomly. I'm just adding small ones and just using the same textures that I've used for the previous flowers. In front, or in this case, underneath the flowers that I've already painted, I'm going to add some looser ones using the wet on wet technique. So after dampening the area below the flowers, I'm going to just reuse the colors that I've already premixed on my palette and I'm just going to tap my brush creating different clusters of flowers. I was thinking of delphiniums here, but it doesn't really matter too much because the paint is just going to spread since I'm painting on a damp surface. And between those purple colors and the rest of the flowers, I'm going to add some grassy texture using a green mix from Terra Verde mixed into the oranges that I already had on my palette. 
I'm also going to add some dark green so it doesn't look too flat by adding paints gray bluish into the previous green mixture and again adding the grassy texture in between some of the lighter ones that I've already painted. I'm not going to add too much of the darker tone since it can be a little bit too strong so I'm just going to leave it for now and add more color to the now faded flowers. Here I'm adding more purple and adding more dots on the area that I've previously painted. After this I've waited for the grassy area to be completely dry so I can paint on it on a dry surface and I'm going to add more flowers this time using a thicker consistency and a darker tone. I just added Crimson Lake into the previous purple mix to create this maroon color. Now I'm going to add a bit of detail to the hyacinths as well using the same color as the base and I just created random marks on one side. For this I was thinking of crepe hyacinth so I was thinking of oval shapes instead of individual flowers. I then added more of the burgundy or the maroon flowers and I also switched the color by using paint gray bluish. After this, I'm going to dampen the surface of another section, which is in between the main focal point of the flowers. And for this, I just wet the surface, just like what I did at the bottom of these flowers. Then I added the same or similar mixture of green to fill in the space. Since some of the sections are quite small, I'm only going to dampen the areas which are large enough to take in that amount of water or damp surface, as well as paint. And around some of these flower petals, since the flowers can be quite small, I want to be very careful and just use the tip of my brush to carefully paint around it. After this, I'm going to move back to the bottom section again since it's quite dry and I want to add some thin stems to some of the flowers which are exposed at the bottom. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add some small leaves to the longer stems. For the greens, you can always vary the tone by adding more as a yellow medium or terra verde according to the tone of green that you're looking for. You can add more terra verde for a more vibrant green, more hands yellow for a more yellow green, and so on. After this, I'm going to move on to a whole new section on top of the flowers that we've already painted. And this time I'm going to be painting them very loosely on a damp surface. Here I've only dampened half of the space that I have instead of going right to the very tip of the horizon line and I'm just going to dot in some colors for the flowers then fill in the rest of the space with the green. Since I feel like the green at the bottom looks a little bit too muted, I decided to use more terra verde in this mixture with a little bit of Hansa yellow. I'm just going to be reusing the same color mixtures as the flowers before since we've already included a lot of hues. But personally, I like to place them in clusters so the composition won't look too busy. And in terms of the hues of the flowers in the background, you can always choose your own combination. I've almost finished covering this area and I've actually took my time to dampen a little bit of the last part which is the top or near the horizon. And before finishing off the middle section, I'm going to add a little bit of purple since I felt like there were a lot of warm colors for the flowers. For this last section, I'm going to pretty much treat it as the previous section by painting the flowers loosely, but to create the illusion of perspective that we're looking at the flowers from a distance, I'm going to paint them a little bit more horizontal or flat instead of the flowers being circular. I also want these flowers to be closer together when they're in a cluster, so generally everything looks a little bit more flat and a bit more loose for this area. I'm also going to do this for the greeneries, so I'm painting them a little bit more horizontal than before. Notice how I also play around with the tone of my greens. This is optional, but I just find that this brings a bit more interest to the painting.
as I get further back right at the edge of the horizon, you can see that my lines are getting shorter and even more flat, and this will help in creating the illusion of distance. Now that the midsection is completely dry, I'm going to use the same hues as the blurry blobs and paint on more flowers very loosely. This will just give a little bit more detail and sharpness. This way there's a softer transition between the more detailed flowers in the foreground and as I move further back in the painting, the details are slowly getting less and less pronounced and as I get even further back, I'm just going to add more lines with a harsher edge since I'm going to be painting on a dry surface this time. Again, I'm still painting this very loosely. I'm not really thinking about individual flowers, but more about how that whole area looks like. And please don't forget to use the same hue as the base color or something that is next to the hue in the color wheel. So as you can see on the yellow flowers, I'm putting orange because this can basically be a darker version of the yellow if I want it to be. After adding some details to the flowers, then I'm switching to my liner brush here and I'm going to paint on some really thin stems for some of the flowers as well as leaves. And for this I'm using the dark green again from a mix of Terre Verde with a little bit of that Crimson Lake. And make sure when you're painting on the stem that they're connected to a flower instead of them just floating with nothing on top. Next I'm going to go back to the foreground again and add a little bit more detail to each of the larger flowers. Here I'm adding more of the orange in a darker value. This is from a mix of Hans Yellow and Crimson Lake. And I'm placing the darker value on the side of some of the petals as well as the center. For some of the round petaled flowers, I'm also going to add a center. So it's a bit easier to see the direction where the flowers are facing. If you want them to face upwards, you would need to make the center a little bit more oval instead of circular. In terms of the color, I use the dark brown mix from Burnt Umber and Paints Grey Bluish. Since I've already painted all of the features of the field itself, I'm going to now look at the field as a whole and jump around to make certain details and adjustments to make sure that everything is balanced. I also switched to my small size zero brush here, this way the strokes can be a little bit more fine and more detailed. Since the base colors at the back here are fairly light, you can also go over those areas again with a different hue. Just make sure to not pile more than two hues together or else you'll create a really muddy color. So here as an example, to make it a little bit more detailed, I'm putting on more green even if it's on top of the oranges. After adding on the smaller details in the background, I can see that the foreground is lacking a bit more detail so I'm going to go back to it and add a little bit more definition to the flowers. So here I'm adding the darker brown mix from Burnt Umber and Paints Grey Bluish and I'm also going to redefine the petals. I'm just going to keep layering a little bit of a darker version of the same base color as the flowers. Just trying to add a little bit more detail to all of them. So for this hyacinth, you can see that my lines are still very loose, but I'm basically trying to create more of a definition for the texture as well as a slight silhouette of the shape. I also felt like the value of the foreground as well as the field at the back looks a bit too similar, so I'm going to layer on more green and this will make the flowers a little bit more defined as well in the foreground. When you're adding on leaf textures, don't worry too much about the detail. I want it to be a suggestion and texture instead of individual leaves. Then after this, I'm going to use a darker green mix to go over some of the green areas again and fill in the space between some of the flower petals to make the brighter colors pop out a little bit more. 
the reason why I'm using a muted dark green here is to contrast the more vibrant and light flowers. With this set though, I'm not going to overdo it by going over the whole area with the same green. Instead, I want certain areas to pop out a little bit more, especially if I feel like the color of the flowers are blending too much into the background. I feel like I have enough detail on the flowers and the flower field, so I'm going to move on to the actual background. I'm going to start by painting the house, and for the roof I used a mix of Crimson Lake and Hansa Yellow Medium, just like the previous oranges. And as for the walls of the house, I used the same orange mix with a little bit of sepia to mute the color slightly and lighten it with some Chinese white. I'm going to leave the base color to dry and paint the sky. For this, I dampen the area of the sky first, then use a mix of paints gray bluish with cerulean blue. Then I just painted the edges, then leaving some white negative space for the clouds. Then to define the clouds, I went in with a little bit more of the same mix but with more cerulean blue so there's a bit more contrast between the white and the blue sky. And since I was painting on the damp surface, it's normal for the darker blues to travel too much into the area of the clouds so if that's the case, I like to take off the excess paint using tissue while it's still damp. Then moving downwards, I want to add the greeneries behind the house. I'm still painting on the damp surface, starting with a light yellow green for the tips of the greeneries. Then I want to play around with the tone to separate the background from the flower field. So here I'm using a mix of paints gray bluish with terra verde to create this dark green. You can also darken it using burnt umber if you prefer. In some areas, I thought that it was a little bit too runny and puddling wet, so I ended up taking off some of the paint using tissue. Then I went over it again with the dark green in a thicker consistency, so it's also traveling a bit less. And I also like to mix up the tone slightly, so for the area on the right, as well as the area that I'm painting here, it has a little bit of that crimson lake or a slight variation in color. Then once everything is completely dry, you can see that the paint or the color has faded. So I'm going to repaint the lighter areas using that mixture with Hansi Yellow. At the tip of some of the trees, I'm also going to add the darker green as well in front. So there are layers to these trees. You can see that I've used three tones of greens for the background here, so I'm just going to keep on using those colors and play around with the consistency to get different values. I'm just slowly building on the layers, but still keeping everything fairly loose because I don't want to include too much detail since this is part of a background. After I'm done with the trees in the background, I'm going to add some fine details for the house. I'm adding the dark brown mixture from earlier to add some shadows underneath the roof as well as some textures. And when I'm painting on these really fine lines, I'm using a dry brush load so I can flatten the tip of my bristles. This way, it's much easier for me to paint on those fine lines. I also use the same brown to add some windows, but the lines didn't turn out too clean. So I ended up going over the edges again using bleed proof white and I'm going to leave it to dry. Meanwhile, while I still have the blade proof white on my brush, I'm going to add some white flowers. Starting with the areas at the back, I just find that this will lighten the composition a little bit more and make the flower field look less dense. After doing this, I like the look of the added white, so I'm going to add some white flowers in the foreground as well. I'm 
also going to add a little bit of white texture to some of the flowers that I find look a little bit too bulky or dense. After this, I'm going to repaint the details of the little house by using the dark brown mix and I added a door as well as two windows. And now I'm going to keep adjusting the flower field. So here I'm adding a bit more of the flower textures in the middle area of the flower field. And I decided to also darken certain areas of the greeneries again to make those oranges pop out more. After the darker green is completely dry, I'm going to repaint some of the stems again. After this, I thought that I was finished, so I ended up unmasking the whole painting, but after unmasking, I felt like some of the flowers look a bit too messy, the edges are not clean enough, so I ended up fixing some parts of the flowers by going over it again using my bleed proof white. This is just a correction on my part because I felt like some of the greens were going over areas of the petals, so I'm just going to clean out some parts. And I'm also going to do this to some of the flowers where I felt the colors were a little bit too muddy. So after painting on the white, I can use a brighter color. So as an example, this mixture has a little bit more Hansa yellow for a brighter color or a brighter tone for the flowers. I just find that after doing this correction, I bring out the color of the flowers a bit more against those muted dark greens. And that's basically it for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. I post every Friday. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!